Welcome to DIY Guitar Making at Eric Schaefer Guitars, where I share my knowledge and experience as a professional acoustic guitar maker in order to promote the craft that we all love called luthery. And in this episode, I'm going to answer the fairly nuanced question of just how thin your guitar sides should be. So first of all, it's important to understand that the only reason that we thin the guitar sides out to the degree that we do is to facilitate the bending process. We're not thinning out the sides for the same reason that we say thin out the soundboard and the back plate. It has nothing to do with the acoustics of the guitar. It's just simply so that we can get it thin enough that it will take a bend without either leaving compression marks or in the worst case, snapping. In fact, later in the guitar building process, you will likely be adding braces or side struts to the sides in order to give some rigidity back to the sides after you've taken it away by thinning it out so much. And the sides need that rigidity added back into it in order to couple the soundboard and the back plate together. You don't want the sides to be all loose and resonant like the soundboard and the back are because in, in that case there's really nothing to couple the resonance of those two plates together. So it's an interesting thing because I think people sometimes get the wrong impression about um, thinning out material in the way that they think that thinner is always better or less is always more and that's simply not true when it comes to acoustics. It's just more complicated than that. But anyway, getting back to why we do thin out the sides, which is to facilitate the bending process. What I consider to be the range of appropriate thickness for bending is 65 thousandths of an inch on the extreme thin end and 90 thousandths of an inch on the extreme thick end. Now in my experience, and I'm assuming in the experience of others, thinner always makes the bend go easier. Knowing that, however, you might think, oh, well, why don't I just always stick to that extreme thin end of the spectrum just to play it safe? Well, the reason for that is if you can afford to leave the wood thicker and still safely get a bend out of it, then you should absolutely leave more wood on there because especially if you're, you're new to this, uh, there's gonna be a lot of sanding and removal of material later down the road, especially considering that we have to flatten out the sides in preparation for bending. I'm sorry, in preparation for binding. We have to flatten out the sides in preparation for binding. And then after the binding is installed, we have to level the binding, which again flattens out and removes more material off of those sides. So if you're already starting out at uh, 75 thousandths of an inch, or especially if you're start going way to the extreme of 65 thousandths of an inch, you have, have to be extremely careful with how much more material you remove after that through um, binding prep, like I mentioned, and through finish prep, preparing the wood for sanding, because that room removes several thousandths of an inch as well, just progressing through the grits. If you are not very mindful of that and you've already thinned your wood out to 65 thousandths of an inch, it's very easy to run into problems where you're um, sanding through the binding in some areas or maybe even through the sides or just leaving the sides way too thin, like 40 thousandths of an inch or something like that in some areas, which is just not stout enough to hold up against, say, um, splits and, and punctures in the side of the wood. So when I talk about extreme edge cases of thinning out to say 65 thousandths of an inch, I'm talking about that under the assumption that you're very aware of the potential problems associated with being that thin, especially that early in the process of building the guitar. And so throughout the rest of the building process, you set yourself up in such a way that you are not continuing to remove excessive material um, through flattening and through finished sanding and all that. 
And all of that really just comes with experience. Because when I first started out, I'm going to tell you, I was all parts of the guitar I would sand way further than I had to. Um, I didn't have the experience to know when to stop. I was making certain mistakes that um, sanding to, to level out down past that mistake would have some other negative consequences, like I'd sand through other things on the guitar. Uh, these, are, these are all problems that, that beginners have, which is just more of a reason if you're just getting into this, to just avoid the woods that are difficult to bend in the first place. Bend with something like cherry or uh, rosewood, is a highly desirable wood, but also a wood that accepts a bend very easily. So both of those woods, you can leave thicker. Um, 85 thousandths of an inch is a pretty safe bet, but you can definitely even get away with 90 thousandths of an inch. And then you're not worried so much about um, sanding later on in the process and potentially, you know, going too far. The woods that you want to thickness further are going to be primarily your figured woods, like your flamed maple, uh, flamed mahogany, anything described as flamed or curly or beeswax. All of these are very figured woods, which means that the grain is going to be much more erratic and that wandering grain is what makes the bend more difficult because it's unpredictable. There are some other uh, species of wood that are, are just difficult even without a figure, um, but those are more of edge cases that we're not going to worry about here. So generally for difficult woods or figured woods, I thickness them out to 75 thousandths of an inch. And then this is a little trick and you can do this for, you know, even on the easy woods. And I picked this up by the way from John Hall, one of his videos. If you thin out your sides and then go to just the waist with either a scraper or a hard block with uh, sandpaper. You can thin out just that waist area an extra five or ten thousandths of an inch because that's where the most significant bend is happening right in the waist. So on very difficult woods I'll thin the whole side out to 75 thousandths of an inch and then thin just the waist area down to 65 thousandths of an inch, which is at that far extreme end of that spectrum. Um, for more ideal woods, again, cherry, rosewood, I will leave those at 90 thousandths of an inch, but then again, I'll still take a hard block and thickness the waste area down an extra um, 10 thousandths of an inch, which will leave it at 80. Now for cutaways, you're going to have a much more extreme bend in that cutaway area, whether it's a Florentine cutaway or a Venetian cutaway. Um, either way, that's going to be a very significant bend, and I always thickness out to uh, 65 thousandths of an inch, pretty much regardless of what the wood is for those cutaway areas. But when I do this, I know that in those areas, I have to have all my work set up in such a way that I'm not going to be excessively thinning out those areas later on in the process. So certainly if you're new to acoustic guitar making, um, you should probably consider just staying away from any kind of cutaway altogether and incorporating that into your process further down the road. So this video, by the way, was a very narrow look at just one aspect of bending. I have another video on our video series on machine side bending and you can check that out on my channel. And then I also teach hand bending, which is bending around a hot pipe. I teach that in my online course, Building an OM Acoustic, because the thickness of the sides is really just one out of five factors that affect the bending process. Those five factors are, well, thickness, like I just mentioned, moisture, heat, pressure, and grain orientation. And I talk about that a lot more in the online course and a little bit in that other um, machine bending video that I mentioned. So anyway, I hope that helps some of you guys out there. And uh, if you want to learn more about that, just check out those sources I just mentioned.
If you learned something here, please give this video a like and subscribe so you can be notified when I release a new DIY guitar making video every Friday. And if you want to really learn more, take one of my structured online courses at ericschaferguitars.com or register for a hands-on guitar building workshop here with me in Burnville, Pennsylvania.